Here's where I sound like a conspiracy theorist. I am 100% convinced that the Mises caucus either started out with this plan or has become infiltrated uh, in order to execute what I'm about to say, which is I think the Mises caucus is enabling takeovers in states by MAGA apologists, MAGA sympathizers, and just plain flat out far right wing nationalists. Okay. Now, if you're saying, Hey, for someone who hates conspiracy theories, big John, you just laid a big one on us. Well, not really. Think about it. In 1994 in New York state, I was, Oh yes, I'm old enough to remember it. I'm a Gen X or old enough to remember this happening live. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1994 in New York state, Howard Stern woke up one morning on his radio and sh- said, I want to run for governor because there's way too much traffic, uh, on the Long Island Expressway uh, when I leave my palace at home to get to the studios in Manhattan. So he decided to run for governor. Who did he run for governor under which party? The Libertarian Party. Why? Because all he needed was to win two-thirds of the vote at the convention, at the New York uh, State Libertarian Convention. And the Libertarians then, as they do in a lot of states now, allow for same-day registration. And the day you register, even if it's the morning of the convention, you can pay your dues, 25 bucks or whatever it is, and vote that same day. Okay? So what did Howard Stern fans do? They drove to upstate New York, went to some little hotel. There were about 250 of them. That's all they needed. All 250 voted for Howard Stern. That got them two thirds of the required vote uh, for the, for their nominee to win. Howard Stern was the official nominee of the libertarian party. By the way, if you asked him, he didn't know what the libertarians were. And he admitted this. He said, I don't know what the party stands for. I'll figure it out later. My position is a death penalty, uh, abortion on demand, uh, all government road work to be done uh, overnight. Of course, it didn't matter to him that the cost would double or triple with that sort of position, right? In other words, there was nothing libertarian about him. Other than his dedication to free speech, there was absolutely nothing libertarian about him. But the Libertarian Party was forced to accept him as its candidate and promote him as its candidate. Then, of course, we know uh, four to five months later, you know, he basically he admitted it was all a PR stunt. He dropped out of the race. The libertarians looked as more ridiculous than they usually did in New York State. And the candidate, they scrambled to get the candidate uh, that was originally supposed to have the nomination put him in place. But by that point, it was all a joke. And what did, uh, what did uh, Stern do? He threw his support behind uh, Pataki. And there's reason to believe that it was that support that um, got Pataki the election, right? So anyway, my point being is the infiltration of a libertarian party, a big one like the one in New York State, was easily accomplished by a clown who, for all intents and purposes, stated, I'm going to take over this party as a goof, as a self-promotion goof. So when you think about it, my sort of these waves of me seeing what I think is, is like a conspiracy theory, uh, an infiltration of the libertarian party by nationalists and far right, uh, nationalists and, and, and really people that for the most part don't seem to align with libertarian philosophy and politics, right? It's not that far off. It's happened before. Hey everybody, this is Big John from Grumblings Media, and I just want to say thank you for watching our content. If you want to support our efforts here at Grumblings Media, just smash the subscribe button right here, totally free, or just go ahead and consume more of our great content. Click either one of these two boxes.